The vision for this unit was getting 34 fifth graders involved in a project that was going to engage and inspire them to possibly become doctors in the future or something within the medical field. The purpose of this unit was to teach the California State Standards, the Next Generation Science Standards, as well as Math Standards to students in a way that engages them and inspires them to want to come to school every day. Having a real world problem that's actually personal and it's something that could actually happen engage the students right away. I told them that there is an illness that's, there's something going on and it's starting in Washington and doctors fear that the illness is going to spread to Southern California. It's something that they knew that they had a task and they only had so much time to figure out how to solve the problem. So right away they were engaged and they were engaged the entire time. The concept came from watching episodes of House I knew I wanted to do a patient care unit, but not having background in a medical field kind of left me, I was at a loss. So I started watching episodes of House and it inspired me to come up with all these illnesses. Students acquired the information about the parasite and bacterial and viral infections from multiple sources. They were reading college level text that they were able to use context clues in each other to figure out what the meaning was. From the reading, they actually created their own diagrams and ways that they were to teach a second grader so that it made sense to everybody in the class. Each group was assigned a disease, and that group went on the CDC and researched the symptoms, the causes, treatments, and the diagnosis and tests. And then from there, using reciprocal teaching, they taught the rest of the class what, the, what that specific disease was. I was able to incorporate the 21st century skills every single day that my students were in here. They were constantly working together, they were problem solving, they were, they were collaborating to solve problems, they were communicating with each other and sharing information that they learned because cer certain students would be in charge of learning certain pieces of the puzzle and then they had to share with their, their fellow doctors on what they learned. They were also using creativity and critical thinking skills every single day. They had to get past their differences sometimes but they, in the end, they persevered and they accomplished the tasks that they were assigned to do. Okay, and this is an example of two different doctors disagreeing on something. And do you guys agree with the way that Edith disagreed with Maya? Yes. yes. Very respectful. Everybody's going to have their own ideas and their own opinions, but you guys are building off each other's ideas and you're making sure that you're keeping an open mind to what other people are sharing. The community support that we received for the patient care unit was from Loma Linda University Medical Center. We spoke with doctors and nurses who guided us in the correct direction on how to effectively teach these illnesses to our patients. And as a culminating project, the students actually went to the Loma Linda University Medical Center Simulation Center and got private tours on all the different mannequins and all the different ways that they practice, that real doctors practice to learn these skills. The patients that were featured in the unit were actually actors that were that applied and were hired to do this job. They had to go through a series of three different steps in order to get accepted into this position. They signed a contract saying that they would be willing to come outside of school time hours and dedicate their time to learning how to be an actor. Del Yent is a professional actor, and he actually came and supported our students by giving them a full day of acting boot camp. The coughing, right? The throwing up, yes, what else? Sore throat. That's all. From, and, and fever. Steve Sutherland is the owner of Fun Corner, which is a makeup artist store here in San Bernardino. He came about four to five different times to show our students makeup artist skills. He supported our students by training them, by showing them the safety techniques that they need to apply each time that they actually make up an actor. And he demonstrated on our students on how to form things like fevers and sweating and blisters and jaundice. And our students have ultimately, they learned and took notes on how to do these skills and they have successfully applied them to their actors. We provided students with the opportunity to practice skills that doctors and nurses use on patients in order to get critical vital signs. We received the support of an EMT who came and trained our students on how to take blood pressure and how to, how to look at a patient and understand right away what might be wrong with this patient. And the blood pressure is going to be taken right here, so on the inside of the arm, okay? Right about at where it bends. We also received support from 
our nurse Sierra, who also showed us how to do temperature and blood pressure and pulse. You want it to be about the same amount. Okay, so they're checking the duration. Bob and Bergstrom is a nurse advisor on TV shows such as House and Chicago Med. She actually did a Skype interview with our students and told us about herself and how she came to be in this profession because she is an RN and she also works on the on the acting side. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Jessica. Hi Jessica, I'm Bob and nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. My question was what's the most challenging part of your career so far? Um Gee, that's a hot whoa, that's a good question. The culminating project consisted of our students taking all the information that they had learned and applying it to real life patients. They were able to ask the patients about different symptoms and they documented on their medical charts all the different symptoms and uh, places that they might have traveled, anything that could have caused their illnesses to come, uh, to come up. They were able to effectively take blood pressure and the respiratory readings, temperature, weight, just basic doctor questioning and observing of patients. What they did after that is they met with all of their doctor students in their groups, and for each patient, they were able to summarize what their symptoms were in order to effectively diagnose the patients. You want to write anything, Esme? He was twitching. Chills. Moving problems and stop breathing sometimes. But his lungs were clear. Um, his lungs were clear, but he couldn't. But he stopped breathing sometimes. Yes, he said it in English. But okay. He said in a, he S -A said a different word. He said it's supposed to be S A. He said. Well, it sounds like he was confused. So maybe you want to write that down. That he was confused. It should have been. Each day of the rounds, there was something new that each actor patient had and they had to make sure that they documented all of the different changes that they that they were experiencing. The purpose of the doctor binders was to show them how doctors should be organized and how they need to make sure that they have all the information needed in an organized way so that they can quickly and efficiently figure out what patients could possibly have. The 21st century skills were utilized during the diagnosis portion of the unit because the doctors were communicating with their fellow doctors. The doctors were also communicating with their patients to tell their patients in patient-friendly terms what might be wrong with them and also showing that empathy that they, that they are there for them and they're there to help them. They had to basically fill in a puzzle. This patient has this so it could possibly be this disease. But wait a second, that patient doesn't have one of these symptoms or one of these causes, so they probably don't have that. They were also using critical thinking because sometimes the puzzle fits in multiple places. And they had to talk and discuss with each other which one is the best fit, and then collaborate and work with, the, with each other to develop questions that they could also ask the patient to make sure that they could clarify maybe they've been traveling somewhere or somebody in their family has something that's like this. He also went to Africa. Well, that gives us a little bit of a hint. Yeah. No. First, he went to he went to Africa, and um, he he drank um, contaminated water. After the doctors figured out what the patients had, they created an after visit summary, and the students actually wrote together in their groups what their diagnosis was and how they came to that conclusion that this is what that particular patient had. The doctors also wrote all the different symptoms that the patients were experiencing in the letter. Then they wrote the treatment plan that they have developed with their team of doctors to actually mail out to the patients. The purpose of reading the book, We Beat the Street, was to have students be exposed to uh, literature as opposed to all the expository texts while we're doing the doctor unit. We Beat the Streets is about three young men who had to overcome many obstacles in their life. They had a really difficult time in school, and once they made a pact to work together and they had teachers that inspired them and were focused on their success, they were able to come together and they became doctors. So what lesson did Ramek learn in Chapter 11? If your birthday's in November, stand up. 
he didn't want to go because he thought his friends would make fun of him because supposedly they would probably make fun of him. They would call him names or something, and he wouldn't be part of, part of their group friend no more. And so if I were him, I would take this opportunity because it's a one in a lifetime opportunity and he should know that even though even though people will make fun of you, you know being smart is better than being cool. Okay. Through the research of polio, we actually had two different groups working on it. One of the students came across something that said end polio now. After further research, the students discovered that it was for the Rotary International Club that they actually are raising money to end polio now. And together, as a whole class, they decided to take plastic containers, create a presentation that they showed to each class, K through six, and said, this is how we can end polio now. And they put the containers that said end polio now and collected money to donate to the Rotary International Club. Where is polio today? The result of the global disease that we call polio today only two countries are presented with The goal is to raise enough money to provide vaccines to the same number of people as we have enrolled, which is 777 students here at Bing Wong. Our students were not only successful at raising enough money to provide vaccines to 777 people, but they exceeded that goal. If you want to help, you can donate money to people who have polio. Every penny counts. What surprised me most about this experience was how the kids were able to work effectively together and I was able to step back and be the sole facilitator. I just got to watch and see kids grow and learn and work together and discover things that are really complicated, high levels of thinking, and they were able to actually learn it and present what they learned to all of their classmates. In the end, we ended up covering about 16 standards as well as all the 21st century learning skills.